the Soviet Union has suffered one of the worst disasters in the history of nuclear power. But first, that explosion at a nuclear plant in the Soviet Union. What caused it and how many people did it hurt? There has been a nuclear accident in the Soviet Union and the Soviets have admitted that it happened. The Soviet version is this. One of the atomic reactors at the Chernobyl atomic power plant near the city of Kiev was damaged and there is speculation in Moscow that people were injured and may have died. The Soviets may have been fairly quick to acknowledge the accident because evidence in the form of mild nuclear radiation had already reached beyond the Soviet borders to Scandinavia. April 26th of 1986, a date that will forever be remembered in human history, the day Soviet nuclear technicians in Ukraine attempted a poorly designed experiment causing the chain reaction in the core to go out of control. The reactor lid was blown off and large amounts of radioactive material were released into the atmosphere. This radioactive cloud spread like a wildfire, inundating both Belarus and Ukraine in a matter of minutes. Two days later, on Monday, April 28th, Increased radioactivity was detected in areas of Sweden, Finland and Norway. Radiation in Norway was six times higher than the norm. In Sweden, about 500 workers were evacuated from the Formans nuclear power plant because the Swedes believe that the radiation might be coming from there. In fact, it took them days to tell their own people to evacuate nearby areas, but Sweden were the first Westerners to send out the alert that something was happening. In England, for example, when I went to visit the Sizewell nuclear power plant in Suffolk, they told us that radiation was detected right after the incident had occurred, and they knew that it must have come from the highly secretive Soviet Union. After three days of virtual news blackout, the Soviet authorities finally admitted what Scandinavia had already deducted from radioactive fallout, that the Chernobyl nuclear accident was a disaster, and that some people have been killed and many thousands more evacuated. But only on May 14th, the Soviet leader, Mikhail Gorbachev, came to public and spoke about the incident for the first time, saying on state TV that the worst is behind us. As many as 49 people may have died in the initial explosions. Beyond these immediate deaths, several thousand radiation-induced illness and cancer deaths were expected in the long term. The incident set off an international outcry over the dangers posed by radioactive emissions, and people started fearing this type of power plants. But at the time, not much was known about this power, and what was discovered was many times just kept as national secret. When the accident happened, the people of the nearby town Pripyat had to leave their houses as soon as they could. When they left, in fleets of buses requested from all over Ukraine, officials told residents they could return in just three days, but in the end, no one came back. Pripyat was already dead. But even after the disaster, the Chernobyl power plant had to continue working. Three reactors remain operational, and Ukraine will be heavily reliant on their output for years to come. That meant creating new homes for power plant workers who were vital for the operations had to be built, and so Slavutich was born. Architects and engineers started designing what was about to be the latest and greatest ideal Soviet city. The spot chosen was a lonely railway station in the middle of a dense pine forest due to the ready railroad infrastructure and the fact it was next to a water supply no other than the Dnieper River. In order to build a city, the ground was covered with a 2-meter layer of uncontaminated soil, and construction began in the fall of that same year. An incredible mobilization of Soviet construction resources, manpower and sheer will made it possible for the first settlers to arrive only two years later in October of 1988, and what they encountered was not a simple town. This was to be the new face of what the USSR represented, a show of ingenuity to the world, an apology from Soviet officials to both the displaced population and the wider communist empire for which the disaster had provoked a demoralizing embarrassment. This clearing of the international image and the new start of the empire saw the brightest planning minds assembled to work on this project, and the result was a city that was way ahead of its time. Slavotich was divided into eight districts or quarters, named after the capitals of the republics that built them. From Estonia to Azerbaijan, each republic had to supply the working force and materials, that in turn led to a unique mixture of distinct cultures, styles and atmosphere. It has a modern architecture with pleasant surroundings and extremely friendly people. In addition, the city has a youth center, a modern community center, a town hall 
an internet cafe, numerous sport facilities, very modern clinics and an hotel. The majority of building designs were borrowed from other Soviet cities because of the lack of time to create something new. But the city's new residents were given a chance to choose the quarter they'll settle in, an unheard of generosity of the communist administration. Soon after it opened its doors, Slavotich transformed from a collection of empty concrete boxes to a living and breathing city with one of the highest standards of living in the Soviet Union at the time. Even today, walking from one quarter to the city to another feels like traveling into several countries at once. There's the Tbilisi Quarter with traditional Georgian crosses on the balconies. The Yaravinsky Quarter takes its architectural cues from Armenia's pink houses made with tough rock. The Azerbaijan-inspired Bakinsky Quarter has mangoes and traditional Middle Eastern barbecue grills in the middle of its courtyards. There are also three districts built by the Baltic countries that boast minimalistic designs and wooden one-story cabins. Slavotich was even designed with separate bike lanes, something that the majority of Ukrainian cities still don't have. The city is often called the last monument to the Soviet Union. But the settlement wasn't as easy as people may think. The inhabitants were told that all windows must be shut, they were not allowed to go outside or even open the doors, and when asked why, nobody answered. The silence didn't feel right, and people were in constant fear and suspicious of the authorities. For many, the new life in Slavotich coincided with the collapse of the Soviet Union and the eventual decommissioning and closure in December of 2000 of Chernobyl's remaining reactors. There were demonstrations on the streets by the workers that devoted their lives to the Chernobyl. They couldn't understand why it should be closed. Up to that point, the nuclear power station had been the primary workplace for most, and now it was simply shut down. The city struggled at first to find its feet, but is now striving to become an open-minded center for innovation and artistic creativity, and the government has made it an exclusive economic area. The city seems to be renewing itself. It has one of the highest birth rates in Ukraine. Its average age is among the country's youngest. Most of its population has a scientific background and people seem to want to live there. With a lot of engineers, scientists and researchers from all over the world meeting in this unique place. There are many factors that contributed to the fall of the Soviet Union, but as President Gorbachev said in a speech a decade later, even more than my launch of Perestroika, Chernobyl was perhaps the real cause of the collapse of the Soviet Union. Over the past few weeks I've been focusing more and more on this region of the world, with a video of the Belarus-Poland migrant crisis and the imminent invasion of Ukraine by the Russian army. And if we take a look at the map, we can see that the Russian soldiers that are now in joint military exercises in Belarus are merely 90 kilometers away from the capital Kiev, so I expect this region to stay active. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching until the end. Don't forget to leave a like if you learned something new and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Obrigado!